Hello everyone, this is a video about stress distribution in a soil mass. I assume you are familiar with the basics of solid mechanics. So let's start this short lecture and I hope you find it informative. In this short lecture, we are going to review only the basics of stress distribution in a soil mass. We are also going to see the application of the, this concept in civil engineering and go through the calculation methods. In this lecture, after a brief introduction, the stress distribution below a point load and a line load will be explained. Then, the induced stress by S3 foundations will be investigated. We are going to see how the concept of stress isobar can facilitate our calculations. And finally, we will conclude with the lecture's recap. Before we go through the calculation of stress distribution in a soil mass, let's see why this concept is important in civil engineering. The first and the main purpose of any structural design is to maintain the safety and the stability of the structure. However, regardless of the strength of the beams and columns, all loads of a building should be finally transferred to the soil beneath the foundation of that building. If the soil is not stable under such loading, the stability of the whole structure is in danger. The other important point is that the behavior of the soil mass itself is a function of the induced stress from the structure. In other words, the strength of the soil is determined by both the characteristic of the grains and the induced stress in the soil mass. Now let's see how the loading can be carried by granular materials. The granular materials in soil form a truss structure beneath the loading point. This truss structure withstands the duress. This figure shows as the depth increases, more soil grains contribute to the bearing of the load. Therefore, the total induced stress at one point decreases with the depth. Now we are going to study the stress induced by two specific types of loading, point load and line load. The figure on the top shows the scenario when a point load of magnitude P is applied to soil mass. And we want to calculate the vertical stress delta sigma Z at a point under load at the distance of L and at the depth of Z. Uzinesk proposed the solution in 1883. In this solution, soil mass is assumed to be an infinite half space with an isotropic homogeneous elastic behavior. This is of course a rough approximation of the actual behavior of the soil mass. Similarly, for a line load on the soil surface, the induced stress at any point below the load can be calculated from the second equation. In a line load, Q is a uniformly distributed load perpendicular to the plane. Here, X is the horizontal and Z is the vertical distance of the point from the loading line. Having the solution of these two specific cases, we are now able to calculate the stress distribution beneath the foundations with simple geometry. We can use the solution of line loading to find out the stress distribution below a S3 foundation. S3 foundations are usually long concrete structures supporting load bearing wall. This picture at the top shows the schematic shape of a strip footing on the soil mass. Now, to calculate the induced stress beneath this type of footing, we are going to use the solution for line loading. Look at the figure at the bottom right. We can assume strip footing act as the accumulation of line loadings. Each tiny strip can be presumed to induce a stress as if it is a line load. Therefore, the integration of line load equation provides us with the equation of stress distribution below the strip footing. This is indicated here. Q here 
is the load per unit of area. X and Z are the horizontal and vertical distance of the point from the center of the strip. And B is the width of the strip footing. One of the convenient ways to evaluate distress in a soil mass is employing the concept of a stress isobar. A stress isobar or pressure bulb is a surface below a specific loading type which has the same stress. Why is it called pressure bulb? Because when pressure is applied to the surface of a soil mass, the stress contours form a bulb shape. This animation shows the development of stress contours below a strip footing. As you can see, increasing the load will increase the surface deformation and the stress magnitude. It also extends the affected area in the soil mass. These contours or isobars show how much stress in, is induced in which points below the surface. Knowing the value of the stress on each isobar, we can evaluate stress in any point below the loading area. These two figures show stress isobars induced by a square loading on the right and a strip loading on the left. The value of the induced stress is stated as the ratio of the stress to the surface load Q. The distance of the point is stated in terms of B, the width of the footing. For example, in the case of a square footing, all points located on this curve carry one-tenth of the surface loading. As expected, the share of stress decreases with the increase of depth. For example, here, the induced stress is reduced to just 2% of the loading surface. Stress isobars are available for different types of footing and can be utilized to evaluate the induced stress in a soil mass. To sum up, during this short lecture, we understood why the calculation of the induced stress in a soil mass below a structure is so important. We learned how business solution can be extended to the different types of loading. We reviewed the stress induced by a strip foundation and finally the concept of stress isobar or stress contours was explained. We learned how we can use a stress isobar to evaluate the stress induced by different types of loading in a soil mass. Now we are familiar with the basics of stress distribution in a soil mass and its calculation methods. This is the end of this lecture presentation. Thank you for watching.